sun will actually be live. Good evening, everybody, and a very warm welcome to the Woodford County High School Virtual Sixth Form Open Evening. It's lovely to have you all joining us this evening. And as you'll have seen from your schedules, we're starting with an introductory talk to give you an overview of our sixth form provision before you have an opportunity to meet some of our staff and students. But without further ado, to give you a proper introduction to this evening, I'm going to hand over to our head teacher, Jo Pomeroy, to tell you more. Yes, a very warm welcome, everybody. Thank you for making the time this evening to join us in this virtual space. We are very conscious that Year 11 students have a lot of decisions to make over the next weeks and months. And what we hope to do this evening is to give you the information to support those decisions and to give you an insight into the sixth form here at Woodford County High School. Um, so very warm welcome everyone and to all the year 11 students out there, um, both those studying here at the moment and those studying elsewhere. We all of us hope you've made a really positive um, start to your year 11 year as we uh, approach the half term. So as I say, you've decisions to make and so I suppose it's quite natural that over these next uh, weeks and months you're going to be doing a great deal of thinking. You're going to be thinking about the person you want to become. You're going to be thinking about what you want to achieve um, and who and where is going to be the best institution to help you with that. Uh, we're all aware that schools are about so much more than just academic results. Um, but I think this evening you will have a focus on that as you think about all those doors you want to open for you uh, well into your futures. So I'm going to start just by giving you a snapshot um, of our academic results this summer with which we were really delighted. And of course, for us, um, as for all schools, these were the first real uh, examinations um, in a couple of years. So we are enormously proud of the students who achieved these results. So at GCSE, um, results were outstanding. We 87% of the entries here at Woodford um, were graded at nine to seven, which in old money is those A star A grades. And an astonishing 44% of those uh, grades were at the nine level. And that was the new high level um, introduced when this new system came in um, to show the most outstanding achievement. Um, we have a very strong academic curriculum here um, and 98% of students um, attained the English Baccalaureate in, in their GCSEs this uh, summer. At A level, and of course it's at A levels that we are um, kind of projecting ourselves forward to thinking about this evening, we had a 99% pass rate and 78% of all entries at Woodford uh, were graded A star to B. And again, at that very top level, at A star A at A level, 53% over half of the results this summer um, came in at those top levels. So I say this not to daunt anyone at all, but really to show what is possible and what our very uh, specialised, uh, experienced and skilled teachers are in a position to help students achieve here. Uh, we have a very interesting sixth form curriculum here. I'm not going to talk about it in great detail because the experts are lined up to talk to you later in this presentation. Um, but something that we place high store on, as indeed do universities, um, is the extended project qualification. Um, this summer, 111 of our year 12 students completed this uh, qualification. It's worth half an A-level um, and it really prepares students very well for study at university, which is why admissions departments um, are so keen about it. And 87% of students attained uh, grades A star to B um, in their extended project qualification or EPQ. In terms of the students that left us in year 13 and attained these sparkling results, um, 137 of the newest undergraduates in the country are Woodford uh, alumni. 
and uh, obviously they are just starting their courses now up and down the country, all sorts of um, academic subjects. Um, five of our students uh, started at Oxbridge this autumn, something in the region of 13 medics, but everything else you can think of as well. Um, classicists, economists, I think there was a robotics engineer uh, this summer and an oceanographer, all sorts of things. So really outstanding results, an awful lot to celebrate. I guess in thinking forward to sixth form education, one of the questions is well, why pursue study to A level? Um, why? What is it about level three qualifications and qualifications that come after GCSE? Well, you get to focus on the subjects you most want to pursue. I guess it's your chance to personalise your own curriculum. So you get to study these subjects for their own sake, and we hope take real joy and excitement from academic subjects. And of course, you get to extend and to deepen knowledge and understanding in those areas. So study for its own sake is exciting in the sixth form and uh, uh, that that chance to extend what you're doing and to have the time to do it and the specialist help in doing so and the resources available is really what it's all about. But we're well aware too, it is about you thinking forward, uh, thinking what you want to do in the future. It's about you getting qualifications that will open doors for you going forward. You might not know exactly what you want to do in the future yet, but you will know generally uh, the kinds of qualifications uh, you will need for subsequent careers. And some of you will know very specifically what it is you want to do um, and what it is, as I keep saying, will open those doors for you. So that's why study at level three. Why Woodford? Well, I hope you're going to hear a lot this evening that will make you um, decide that Woodford will be the place for you to study and to see how well supported you will be here and just how pleased uh, we will be to welcome you to our sixth form. But uh, first and foremost, Woodford is a school community. It's a very strong sense of community. It's nice to have all the year groups um, in the school together. And I think what that gives you, uh, really importantly, is a sense of belonging and a sense of a com community uh, to which you can contribute and your contribution will be valued. Um, but also, of course, from which you yourself can benefit. Why Woodford? Well, I've talked about academic results and those doors opening for you as you think forward and plan your future post 16, but then indeed all the way into your future. You're going to hear a lot this evening about the enrichment offer at Woodford what we focus on, what we provide, what we offer that extends beyond examination syllabus, uh, beyond the subjects you've chosen, um, and that will enrich both your time in the school and indeed um, your profile as you move forward. It's a real chance to develop your current interests and indeed to discover new ones. Also, of course, it's the opportunity to hone those soft skills which are so valued in the workplace, but also so crucial in adult life. Um, and there's plenty of opportunity to do that um, as you continue in the sixth form here. So lots of decisions for you to make. Um, that's just a, a brief introduction from me. I'm going to hand over now to my colleagues who are going to flesh that out um, and show you what's on offer here at Woodford. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Miss Pomeroy. So I'm going to speak for a few more minutes, first of all, about what makes the Woodford Sixth Form unique. Um, there are many things I could talk about and I will focus on a few of them specifically. But before I do that, just to give you a little taster of all the different things that our Sixth Form has to offer. Well, first of all, we do have expert subject specialist teaching. We have a wide range of A-level subjects on offer, 19 in all, and you'll be able to find out more about all of those in the second half of this evening's event. Um, but all of those are taught by experts in their subject 
even up to the, the slightly more niche ones like classics and Latin and music to our most popular ones in the sciences and the humanities. As I said, we have a wide range of courses and options and alongside all of those different A-level options, we do also have the EPQ, the Extended Project Qualification, and I'll be speaking a little more about that. But you'll also have the opportunity to meet our head of EPQ, Mr Pritchard, later in the event and find out more from him. Our personal tutorial system is definitely one of our key strengths. Again, this is one of the ones I'm going to focus on a little more momentarily, but the fact that every single one of our sixth form students has a personal tutor who they meet with one-on-one -on -one regularly, who gets to know them both academically and on a personal level really, really well, is a real strength and something that is quite unique to Woodford and not offered widely. As Ms Pomeroy's already alluded to, we do have a really wide range of both supercurricular and extracurricular opportunities available in our sixth form. Just to explain the distinction between the two, um, supercurricular is the word that we tend to use when we're talking about opportunities that relate to subjects, but which extend students beyond the A-level curriculum. So things like masterclasses, lectures, visits, workshops, um, awards, competitions in that subject, uh, all sorts of things across the different subjects that really allow our students to push themselves beyond the A-level to really explore their interests in those particular subjects and of course therefore to get a really good grasp of what they're interested in and what perhaps they might want to do at university and the next step. Extracurricular, on the other hand, uh, we also sometimes refer to this as enrichment, tends to be those opportunities that are maybe not directly linked to a student's A-level subjects, but allow them to broaden their experience. So getting involved with uh, learning new skills, having positions of responsibility within the school, running charitable events, doing voluntary service, all of these different things will allow students to, as I say, broaden their experience, gain new skills and show that they are a well-rounded individual. And we have a lot of that on offer. I briefly mentioned the EPQ already, the Extended Project Qualification. And what makes it unique at Woodford, because this is offered at quite a lot of sick forms, but what's unique here is that this is a really key part of our curriculum offer. And in one of our A-level pathways, which our Deputy Head Teacher, Mr Jenkins, will be explaining a little bit more later on, the extended project qualification does form a key part of what students study and therefore they don't just do it in their own time or perhaps as an extra activity as might happen at some sick forms but they have timetabled lessons with an advisor who supports them throughout the process they have supported study periods with support from the librarian to really make the most of this important qualification we have a, a really thorough higher education and careers programme at Woodford, which prepares students for their next steps. As Miss Pomeroy alluded to, many of our students choose to go to university, but we also have students who go on to do degree apprenticeships, who go into careers and who uh, try out different options, studying abroad, for example. So we prepare students for all of these different things and make sure they're aware of what all of the options are that are available to them. In particular, we do have two programmes to support students going for more competitive university applications. Um, so our Oxbridge pro uh, programme supports students obviously uh, applying for Oxford and Cambridge and all of the different elements of that from admissions tests to interviews to personal statements to uh, the work they need to provide for those uh, universities and then our MDV programme which you'll hear about a bit more from our head of science shortly is our medicine dentistry and veterinary science programme which supports students applying for those courses again they are very competitive but we support students at every stage of that process and more on that later we have excellent facilities and um, for those of you who would be new to Woodford who aren't currently students here you'll have the opportunity to see these at open mornings which I'll tell you a bit more about later and we'll be inviting you to those via email um, but we have particularly in our science and maths block really high standard facilities um, and then our beautiful older school buildings which you may well have seen from the road um, where our other subjects are housed. We have dedicated pastoral and well-being support throughout the school, but particularly um, in the sixth form, we have a really strong team of our tutors, um, our sixth form leadership team, but we also have our pastoral support assistant who is dedicated to working with the sixth form, um, who offers well-being support and so on. And uh, you'll be meeting Mrs Easton, who will be next year's head of year 12 a little later on, and she'll be telling you a bit more about that offer. But students who come to the Woodford sixth form will really be well looked after in all aspects of what they do. 
And finally, um, something else that makes us maybe a little unique is our focus on developing independence in learning. So I want to tell you a little bit more about that now. So it's really important to us at Woodford that our students, when they join us at the end of year 11, grow to independent young people by the time they leave us. And that is independence in their learning, but also independence in taking responsibility for themselves and being able to go out into the wider world, whether that be university or a job or an apprenticeship, ready to do that and with all the knowledge they need. So we have a number of ways that we support students to do this. Um, first of all, in year 12, we have a dedicated study skills programme to allow all students to build the skills that they need to cope at A-level. A-levels are a big step up from GCSEs, and I'm sure you'll know that and you'll hear more about that tonight from all the subject teachers. But we give all students the skills that they need to make that transition. Across the school, we do have a lot of facilities for private study for sixth form students with computers, uh, silent areas, quiet talking areas, lots of different places where students can work. And we also have supported study for students who need it, where they can get extra support from teachers, including subject specialists, to help them with their work. We provide a lot of online resources for independent learning, both ones that we have developed ourselves, but also we um, link into a lot of different online resources such as uh, JSTOR for academic journals, Massalit for lectures, um, things like Dr Frost Maths might be one people have come across at GCSE, but we have lots and lots of these different resources available to make sure that students are, have everything they need for their independent learning time. I've mentioned uh, these things already, super curricular, work experience and higher education. And um, just to note on work experience, I've mentioned our voluntary service programme already where all students find a placement somewhere in the local community, which acts both as work experience and being able to give back to the community. Um, but we also offer a huge range of different work experience opportunities outside of school to students um, that come across our way. And you can find out more about all of those on our website. Our enrichment programme, which links with voluntary service, as I've mentioned before, allows students to really build a wide range of skills. And as well as all these things which are about building students' independence in their learning and in their, what they're doing in school, we also, as I've said, build their independence and help them to take more responsibility for themselves so they're ready to um, go out into the world and potentially live independently when they go to university. So we require students to take responsibility for their own school experience. We communicate with students about things which they might need to be thinking about. Obviously, we um, would talk to parents as well and make sure you're fully informed, but we go to students first as our first port of call um, whenever we've got anything that we want to celebrate with them or perhaps something that we need them to focus on uh, we make sure that they are always aware and able to take responsibility for their own learning. Our one-to-one -one tutorial system which I'll be talking more about in a moment really fosters this as well and that one-to-one -one meeting that students have really gives them that opportunity to think about how they're doing to reflect on their progress in our sick form. And again the EPQ is a thoroughly independent qualification that I'll be talking more about in a moment. So let's talk about the tutorial system first of all, having just mentioned it. Um, so as I say, every student in our sick form is part of a tutor group, but the way that works at Woodford is not that you just meet with your whole tutor group every day, which might be what students are used to from their current school and from lower down in the school, but actually they do meet as a whole tutor group once every half term, but the rest of the time they have one-on-one -on -one tutorials with their tutor. So that gives them a really good opportunity to get both pastoral mentoring and also academic mentoring. Their tutors will know them really well as a person they'll be able to guide them around support with their A levels around any personal issues they might be facing around their university applications they have that opportunity every other week to meet with that tutor and have dedicated time to support them in their sixth form career as I say that includes the UCAS which is the university application support um, and their references but then when they meet together which they do as I say once every half term with the rest of the tutor group they also get to work well with others on some of those skills such as study skills university applications and then some of those kind of need to know topics when you leave school student finance and how to support your own health and well-being so that is something that really makes us unique in the way that we run our tutorial system I've talked a lot about the, oh, sorry, I forgot I had a slide here. I'll just leave this one up for a moment. Um, a few comments from former students about our tutorial system and things that they really appreciated and things that worked well for them. I 
and I should say that later this evening you'll have a chance to meet with some of our current students, so you're very welcome to ask them about this too. Now I will move on to talking about our EPQ, um, so I have mentioned this a couple of times. So the EPQ is a level three qualification, which means it is at the same level as A-level, but it's a smaller qualification, so it's worth approximately half an A-level. This is a qualification that we run specifically because of the skills that it builds for students to help prepare them for university. So this quote that's on your screen right now is from a, a professor, a university professor who noted when EPQ was first rolled out um, just why it was so important for A-level students. So that's ability to be independent, to engage critically with the topic um, and to take intellectual risks, as he's put it. All of this prepares students brilliantly for when they start university because these are just the sorts of skills that they're going to need there. So the EPQ itself comes in four different options of which we run three at Woodford. Uh, the dissertation, which is essentially an extended piece of writing about a topic of their choice, uh, performance, which is fairly self-explanatory, and an artefact, which is making a thing. Though I should say with both performance and artefact, there is a great deal of research involved as well to ensure that that performance or artefact is fulfilling a brief um, and is well thought through as well as being created or put on. Most of our students do follow the dissertation route, but we have a significant number in the other areas as well. So the EPQ, which is finished for all of our students at the end of year 12, so a real um, you know, achievement for them when they finish year 12 already with a qualification, is a great thing to have. Um, and universities, as I've said, really value this. They love to see that on students' applications, but also that it means that students will have that sort of flying start um, when they start at university because they will have developed these skills already. Um, just three universities here commenting on it, and you can see that as well as all the skills they learn in some cases, so you can see Queen Mary in the middle there, sometimes having a strong EPQ also allows students to get a slightly um, lower or slightly more um, achievable offer when they go to university as well. So it has that added benefit too. And it's something our students really value. As I say, the topic that students choose for EPQ is entirely their own choice. Yes, of course, we'll guide them and help them uh, choose something that's suitable, that will have enough research that's going to allow them to be successful, but they can choose whatever they like. So we have a huge range of different topics being studied every year. And um, just to give a few examples in my EPQ, EPQ class currently, I have a student looking into forensic dentistry and whether that's a reliable thing that should be used in uh, criminal prosecutions. I have another student who is looking at uh, music therapy and how music therapy can be used to work with um, young children with autistic spectrum disorders. Um, I have another student who is looking at uh, racism and racial bias in Formula One um, and how Lewis Hamilton is an interesting case study of having overcome some of the racial bias uh, that he uh, was challenged by along the way. Those are just three examples, all completely different to each other and of course across the whole year group there are many many more. So something really valuable that we think is a great part of our offer and really unique to Woodford, as I say, in the way we deliver it. I'm going to close with just a reminder about our A-level results. Now, Miss Pomeroy has already spoken to you about these, but we are very proud of our A-level results this year. Um, a real significant number of A star and A grades, those top grades that are going to allow students to do really well and go on to university in the top courses. Um, and as you can see there, over half of our students uh, or about half of our students achieved the um, top grades that they need to go to the absolute best universities in the country. Although all of our students did manage to make their, uh, get the grades they need for university, although some have chosen to uh, apply this year. So a real, real strength there. And also um, having talked about EPQ, I feel I should re-mention, of course, um, just how strongly that came out with 60% of EPQ grades um, at those absolute top grades this year. So coming to Woodford really should set up your daughter really well for her next steps, whatever those may be. So I'll leave you just with this slide as a reminder of some of the things that are unique to us. But I'm going to pass over now to Mr Jenkins, our deputy head teacher, and he's going to be talking to you a little bit more about the options process and applications to our sixth form and precisely what you need to be thinking about in order to do that. So bear with me one moment, Mr Jenkins, while I get you on screen. And over to you. 
Right, good evening everybody. Uh, yes, as Ms. Hassa said, I'm Mr. Jenkins. If you don't already know me, uh, I'm the Deputy Head Teacher and one of the things I'm responsible for is the A-level options process. Um, so I'm just going to talk you through that process now, um, starting off with some important dates. Um, <clears throat> so if Ms. Hassa could move the slide on to the next day. Um, so here we are with the virtual open evening, the 18th of October. Uh, and on the left hand side are all the things that we do in school in order to prepare our students for uh, both making these choices and then finally taking up their A-level subjects uh, next year. And it is important that you think things through very, very carefully and you do make a considered decision when choosing your A-levels. Uh, you don't just jump into it. Um, so we already have the step up to sixth form event with our own internal students. And now we have the virtual open evening. Um, and then tomorrow we'll be publishing the options choice survey. Now this is a survey, not your actual choices. And I'll come back to the importance of that a little bit later on. Um, the deadline for that is quite quick. As you can see, it's Friday. Um, and then on the 7th of November in school, I'll be doing a final options talk with our students in their PSHC lesson um, and I'll be explaining the option blocking to them. At that time, the applications for external students will then open and they can apply to join the sixth form using the option blocks that have been constructed. Internally, we then have our review days where we uh, talk through one to one all the, uh, with all the students, their choices and their academic progress. Uh, and then we meet parents, of course, on parents evening. And then it's after the parents evening that the application process opens for our own internal students. There is then a month in which both internal and external students can make applications and the final applications close on the 4th of January. Then in January, the mock examinations take place for our internal students. I suspect most externals will have mocks around that time as well. They're obviously very important as a guide uh, to how uh, likely you are to do well in the subjects you're thinking of doing for A-level. And then in March 2023, precise date to be advised, we have our offer holder day to all those to whom we've made offers both internal uh, and external. Then in June, we have the induction for those, and then very important date, 24th of August, GCSE Results Day. Uh, and that's when we enroll both our internal students into the sixth form and our external students. It's all done on that same day. So if you are thinking about holidays next year, please keep the 24th of August free. Uh, please try not to be on holiday on that date because uh, it's really important that uh, you're in the country to collect results, bring them in and have those important conversations uh, to finish your enrolment in the sixth form. <clears throat> so that's an overview of the dates. If I can just have a look now at the A-level subjects that we offer. Ms. Hassler referred to these earlier on. Um, you'll see I've highlighted three of these in red, um, and that's again because for our own internal students, they won't have studied these at GCSE. I know there are some schools that do do these at GCSE, and some of you watching this may well have done this or your school may do this, but we don't do these ones at GCSE here. Uh, but you don't have to have studied them at GCSE to study them at A-level. If you are one of our own internal students, then you will be getting a subject specific talk on each of these uh, over the coming weeks just to give you a better idea of what they're about. But information on all of these subjects is on our website. So if you go to the sixth form section, a section of the website, you'll see there uh, a summary of every subject that we teach, uh, including the entry requirements and so on and so forth. So earlier on, Ms. Hassler talked about the pathways that you might follow uh, if you come here. Now, the vast majority of people will follow pathway one or pathway three. So I'll just talk about those two first. So pathway one, which is, if you like, the sort of classic pathway, is three A-levels <clears throat> plus the extended project qualification um, and the enrichment programme, uh, which everybody does. So the extended project is completed in year 12, around about April. And after that, you then just study the three remaining A-level subjects and you sit examinations in those in year 13. So most people end up doing pathway one. Some people like to, prefer, uh, like to follow pathway three and that's a four A-level pathway. And that also contains the enrichment programme, but you do not study the extended project as you see because you already have your timetable full. At four A-levels, you don't really have time to do the extended project on top of that. If you follow that one, you do all examinations <coughs> in year 13. 
A small number of students will follow pathway two. Uh, this is a slightly reduced program, which is three A levels plus supported study plus enrichment. So these are normally students who maybe have only just met the entry requirements for whom doing the extended project on top of three A levels might be a little bit challenging. Um, and so they would normally be counseled to move on to this program when they start. But you don't opt into pathway two. That is something uh, that we look at once we have your GCSE results and we can uh, make a case by case decision uh, in discussion with you uh, based upon. So you may be thinking, well, should I do pathway one or pathway three? Both are completely valid pathways. And I think the thing to make clear to you here is that neither is going to give you a greater advantage in applying, applying to university. Um, quite a lot of people are under the impression that if you want to go to say Oxbridge uh, or if you want to study uh, highly competitive courses, it's much better to do four A levels. Uh, that's not the case. Um, so A levels are always, um, or rather universities always offer degrees based upon three A levels. Um, and three A levels is all you need to go to Oxford and Cambridge and those other competitive courses as well. Um, <clears throat> so which pathway should you choose? Well, that's really up to you, but a couple of things uh, to bear in mind. So as I said, all universities make offers based on three A levels. It's the standard A level diet. And in some schools, of course, you can't even, you can't do four A levels. Um, the workload tends to be manageable if you do three A levels, because once you've finished your extended project, um, you then can focus on those three A levels for the remaining, re remaining year of your time here. Um, and also you are spreading yourself less thinly. So again, if I use the Oxbridge example, um, they will admit you if you get an A star and two A's in your A levels, they won't admit you if you get an A star and A and two B's in your A levels. Um, so much better to focus on the three that you're going to do best at. And the other thing, of course, is in year 12, it gives you time uh, to also study the extended project qualification. On the other side, you may wish to do four A levels. If you want to do further maths, then you have to do four A levels. That's one of our requirements um, to avoid the narrowing of the curriculum that would happen if you did four maths in one other subject. Um, <clears throat> you do need to be academically strong and well organized. So it does give you added breadth, but it is an extra challenge. There is more work recommended. Also, some courses at university do have a high point score tariff, which is a slightly different way of making an offer. Uh, and if you have four A levels, then you might get a better chance of reaching that high point score tariff. Um, but as I said, that should not be the primary consideration. So for those who want to do four A levels, it's really only recommended for those likely to achieve at least an average point score of a grade eight uh, in your GCSEs, which is quite a challenging uh, figure to reach and I'll come back to that uh, in a moment. So those are some of the things to consider. So there's a summary of the timelines. You can see uh, pathway one where you uh, by April 2024 have already completed one qualification. You will then have internal exams in all your other subjects in the summer and then do your final exams in summer 25 with pathway two and three you still have the internal exams in subjects in summer 24, but you don't do any other uh, external assessments and all your final examinations will be in the summer of 2025. Uh, we do not uh, do ASs at this school and also if you uh, uh, follow a subject like further maths, we don't enter you at the end of year 12 for that. So everything is at the end of year 13. So when it comes to making the choices, then um, you will choose three subjects from four A level blocks <clears throat> and then you'll be asked to indicate whether you wish to study a fourth A level or select the EPQ and that'll be on a drop down menu. It's, it's pretty straightforward filling this in uh, when and you will see that when it comes live. So let's have a look at the blocks. So there's a couple of important things uh, to notice about these blocks. First of all, these are the blocks of the current year 12s. So these are not the option blocks that you will be choosing from. It's important for me to emphasize that 
uh, the option blocks change every year in terms of which subjects are in which block. And there's a reason for that. And that's because we base the blocking on the initial option choice survey that our year 11 students complete. Subjects have to be timetabled in blocks. If they were not timetabled in blocks and you just try to freely um, timetable them, you'd end up having all sorts of subjects overlapping and students have to be in two places at once. That's obviously not practical. So timetablers use blocks um, to make this, uh, might make timetabling uh, possible. So we have four option blocks you choose from. So what will happen uh, starting from tomorrow is that those who are in our existing year 11 will look at the various subjects and they will choose their four top preferences. These are not their final choices, I hasten to add. These are just their preferences at this time. However, they are important because when we uh, look at those preferences, we then construct the blocks. So if, for example, we find that um, we have lots of people who want to do a given subject, uh, then we may decide that that needs more than one class. If we see that um, lots of people want to do um, maths, psychology and say um, computer science, then we will make sure that those subjects aren't in the same block so that they can do that combination. So you'll see that the subjects here have been arranged because of the uh, based on the combination of subjects that people chose in their initial option block survey. Once the blocks are completed, however, it then becomes much more difficult to choose uh, a combination that falls outside the blocks. And the reason for that is because, as you can see, certain subjects are only in one block. These are the ones that I've highlighted uh, in bright green. So why do we put art, classics and religious studies into block C, for example? Well, the reason we put them there was because nobody who did the initial option choice survey wanted to do that combination, art, classics and religious studies. Therefore, we put them all in the same block. And the same goes for the other light green subjects. So that makes that means that everybody who made a choice last year got the subjects they wanted and we've made the blocks based on that uh, choice. What it does mean, though, is that once the blocks are there, if you then change your mind and decide, no, I would now like to do art and classics, then you're not going to be able to do so because they're in the same block. They're going to be taught at the same time. So that's why taking seriously this initial option choice survey is important uh, so that we can get that blocking right. Now, in a small number of cases, if we have a subject that has very few candidates in it, <clears throat> so for example, something like A-level music, which doesn't tend to have huge numbers of candidates, if somebody wishes to change their option and then it produces a clash, say with geography, it might be possible for us to move either geography or music into another block where it doesn't clash. So these aren't necessarily written absolutely in tablets of stone straight away, but it does become more difficult to move them once you've made that initial choice. And in some cases, particularly subjects which will have a lot of uptake, like history, it's pretty much impossible to move them once they're in the block. The other thing that you will notice, sorry, let's just go back. The other thing you will notice is further maths. So further maths you'll see is in two blocks. This is because when you study further maths, you will be doing your A-level maths, uh, you'll be covering the A-level maths con content um, <clears throat> in one year, and then you'll be covering all of the further maths A-level content in another year. So you're doing two A-levels. Um, therefore, it takes up the space of two A-levels in the option blocks. And so what, if you choose further maths, half of your timetable will be further maths. So make sure that you really like maths if you're going to choose further maths, but also beware that it will possibly limit your options later on because it's then uh, taking up two blocks. That's two blocks worth of subjects. If you then change your mind and decide, for example, here you want to do further maths and history, making that change will then not be possible. But most options choices are possible. So these are the blocks that you will eventually have to choose from later on in the academic year when the options go live. Uh, but these are not what you're choosing from now. We construct these blocks based upon the option choices that people make. And as I said before, remember that option choice survey is not your final choice. It is just to enable us to set up these blocks 
from which you will then later on make your final choice. OK, thank you. I hope I haven't been too long winded or confusing there, but there is a question and answer session later if you want to ask any more about that. Um, so in order to get back into the sixth form here, you do have to meet the minimum entry criteria. This is what they are at the moment. So a minimum average cap point score of 6.5. What does that mean? That means that we look at your GCSEs, we look at the best eight, and then we average out your score. And if it's 6.5 or above, then you've met that minimum entry requirement. You do also need a grade six in English language or literature and a grade six in maths. So if you get 6.5, but you only have grade five in maths, I'm afraid you have not met the entry criteria. You need to have both of those things. There are also certain subject specific entry criteria. So for most subjects, it's a grade six in that subject at GCSE. There are some exceptions. Um, I won't read through every single one of them there. You can find this on our website. Uh, important to note for A-level further maths, for example, you need a grade eight or nine uh, in GCSE maths. Other subjects require a grade seven uh, and computer science and um, physics also require you to have a grade seven in maths. So in summary then, for internal candidates, your online application module will become available from the 6th of December. Applicants from other schools, it will be the following day from the 7th of December. We only accept online applications, so make sure that you fill in your application properly you won't be able to sort of complete the form, save it and come back to it. You have to complete it all in one go. Uh, and then once you've submitted your application, you will uh, not be able to change it. It will be very difficult uh, to change. It won't necessarily be impossible. It will be very difficult to change it. You would have to uh, sort of get in touch with the school to see if you can uh, do that. So you can only put in one application. I would also make sure that you've printed off a copy of that so that you can uh, check through it uh, and then we will decide whether to make you an offer. Those applications as I said, have to be received by the 4th of July and you also have to submit the PQ supplementary project and proposal. Um, so I think that's all I wanted to say for now. So I will be available for further questions later on if you need any more clarification. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr Jenkins. Um, just to clarify one of the dates there, it was the 7th of November is when the applications open for non-Woodford students um, rather than the 7th of December. All of the dates are available on our website too. So I'm going to hand over next to Mrs Easton, who's going to be talking a little bit more about studying arts and humanities subjects at Woodford. Mrs Easton, over to you. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, I am Sam Easton and I'm currently the head of Year 13 um, and I'm also a member of the Classics Department. Um, so I just wanted to take a few minutes to talk to you this evening about taking arts and humanities subjects at Woodford. But before I do, I just wanted to perhaps give you a bit of food for thought in case you're still undecided at this point about which subjects you do want to take. So undeniably, we live in a world that is absolutely dominated by technology, and it is often the STEM subjects which do tend to take centre stage. Now, there's no doubt that science and technology have helped mankind to achieve incredible feats, but it's history and philosophy and politics and the arts that have really shaped the society that we live in today. So it's really important that you never underestimate the impact of arts and humanities subjects. So why take arts and humanities subjects at Woodford? Well, the first reason is something that Miss Pomeroy spoke about earlier on, and that's choice. We are very fortunate at Woodford to have a wide range of subjects available. Art, music, English, history, geography, politics, classics, religious studies through philosophy and ethics. And we're really lucky also to be able to offer modern foreign languages and subjects that might not be available elsewhere. I've already mentioned classics, but Latin would be another of those subjects. I can't promise that that's not going to be the last plug for the classics department. 
Um, seriously, though, another important reason uh, to consider when taking the arts and humanities is the teaching at Woodford. Um, we are very fortunate to have expert teachers, uh, sometimes up to three per subject, all of whom specialise in different areas and aspects of the courses. So you'll be able to benefit from all of their knowledge. And something that often appeals to students about the arts and humanities at Woodford um, is the potentially smaller class size. Now, that's not always a given, um, but quite often it does tend to be the case that there are smaller groups and learning in that kind of environment can make a real difference to your experience and also a difference to the relationship that you end up having with your teachers. Smaller class sizes lend themselves particularly well to classroom discussion and to debate. And for arts and humanities subjects, that will obviously form a large part of your learning. Now, as I say, class sizes do vary from subject to subject, but one thing is for certain, and that is that Ms Pomeroy has always made a real commitment where possible to support and to keep these smaller subjects. In many other schools, unfortunately, these subjects can and have been dropped from the timetable, but we're very fortunate that that has not happened at Woodford. Something else to consider as well when you're making your decisions are the facilities that we have available. And I know that Ms Hasler also spoke about the facilities that we have on offer. Um, students do have excellent um, or they have access to excellent computer facilities. We have a very well resourced library and we also have the invaluable knowledge of our librarian, our lovely librarian, uh, Mrs Horn, uh, who is always looking for new and exciting opportunities uh, to help students to further their learning. Um, she has arranged numerous webinars, uh, has facilitated the use of Massolit, which I know Mrs Hassler uh, mentioned earlier. Massolit have worked with uh, university academics to create over 3000 short video lectures uh, for secondary schools, and they cover six key areas, including English literature, history, classics, philosophy and politics. There are also a multitude of extracurricular activities to support classroom learning for arts and humanities subjects. So visits to theatres and libraries, lectures and seminars. Now I want to come back to your option choices um, and why you should consider arts and humanities subjects. And my number one reason, and again, it's something that was mentioned earlier on um, when Ms Pomeroy was talking to you, but it's enjoyment. Um, personally, I do think it's a bit of a nonsense to expect every single 16 year old to know at this point in their life what they want to do with the rest of their life. And so I think that enjoyment is absolutely key. As a teacher, I think it would be short sighted to discourage any student from pursuing interest. You need to choose what you enjoy, because if you truly enjoy a subject, then you are far more likely to do better at it and it won't feel like such a chore. Genuine interest in a subject encourages intellectual curiosity, and that is exactly what you are going to need to become the independent learners that we want you to be, and then to go beyond the confines of the A-level syllabus. And remember as well, and this is really important, that it doesn't have to be a one or the other kind of decision. Having a mix of arts and humanities and STEM subjects can often be really complementary and it shows that you're a well rounded student, which leads me on to my next point. It's really vital that you don't get too bogged down with that age old question of but what am I going to do with it? All of these subjects have value and global recruiters love hiring arts and humanities students because they offer employers such a wide range of transferable skills. So what are these skills? Writing and critical thinking, dealing critically with subjective, complex and often imperfect information and knowing that there isn't always a right answer. Weighing up evidence and considering more than just one point of view understanding others through language, through history and through culture. And encouraging empathy and sensitivity, clear communication. The list is absolutely endless when it comes to the transferable skills that you will acquire through study in arts and humanities subjects. To give you one real life example, I guess, um, of all of the um, friends that I have that I studied classics with at university, I am the only classics teacher. Uh, the rest of them went on to work in law, 
the NHS, uh, they work for the Home Office, they work in the police, uh, for publishing companies. I mean, there really is no end to what you can do with those subjects. Now, every year we have a really healthy number of students who go on to university to study arts and humanities subjects. Um, this past summer, students went off to study law, English, classics, history of art, history and modern languages, music, architecture, ancient history, fashion design and development, uh, modern and medieval languages. It's a long list. And students uh, who study these subjects consistently make up at least 50% of our Oxbridge offers. Now, if all of that hasn't convinced you yet of the joys of studying arts and humanities subjects at Woodford, um, my one last ditch attempt is to bring out the big guns and, and talk about study visits. Um, now, obviously, the past couple of years um, have meant that our usual trips have had to come to a bit of a halt. Um, but I'm very happy to say that a lot of these trips are now back up and running. Um, walking on a glacier with the geography department, watching the sunset over the Temple of Poseidon in Greece, walking through the ancient ruins of Pompeii with the classics department, language trips to Christmas markets in Germany, history trips to Paris, music tours, art visits. There are so many opportunities and so much to look forward to. So I hope that I've given you something to think about. And I'm sure that your subject teachers will be able to answer um, any of your questions um, later on in the evening. I obviously hope to see lots of you taking arts and humanities subjects with us next year. Um, I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. I'll actually be back with you a little later on um, to talk to you as your head of year. Um, but for now, that's me and I will be passing over to Miss Estruck, who is going to be talking to you about STEM subjects and also about our medicine and dentistry preparation programme. Hello everyone, so I'm Miss Estruck and I am the Head of Science and I'm going to give you a bit of an introduction as to why study science and in particular why study science at Woodford. So first of all, just to give you an idea of what you can expect from studying science at Woodford, you have four lessons per week in year 12 and you'll also now have five lessons, sorry, per fortnight um, per, per teacher, but four in total and five hours in year 13. So we have this extra hour in year 13 over the course of the two weeks. Now for every hour in lesson, we recommend to do maybe one hour outside of independent learning. And you also get a really good opportunity to do lots of practicals in sciences, which is so key for learning, but also in the enjoyment of the subject as well. We offer lots of opportunities for assessment and feedback so you can make sure you are continually progressing and so you know exactly what you personally need to do to improve. So you should consider science A-levels if, first of all, this is the big one, if you enjoy the subject and it's also a bonus that you are good at it. You need to make sure you do love the science before you pick to do it as an A-level, because as with all A-levels, it is hard work, it is challenging. The A stands for advanced, so make sure it's definitely something that you love. Also, if you want to increase your knowledge, understanding of the scientific theories that you've learned at GCSE and develop the skills of being able to apply your knowledge. And thinking about these skills, Sciences do offer a range of skills that would link to all sorts of different careers, whether that's in science or out of science. So you'll do lots of problem solving skills in science. You do logical reasoning, communication, and you have to have a lot of resilience within the science subjects. Now, typically people think straight away about science, going into medicine, dentistry, but you can actually go into a whole range of different degrees with a science A-level. And if you want to go into science related degrees, a whole a list we've got here, engineering, that's been quite popular recently, or just the pure sciences, biology, chemistry, physics. Um, you do have then your traditional medicine, dentistry, veterinary sciences, but there is a whole wealth of science related degrees you can go into. It's not just medicine and dentistry, and we do give you lots of opportunities to discover these throughout the course of the two years. So why then take science at Woodford? The first one is the experienced teaching staff. 
we make sure that at Woodford you have only qualified teachers and you only get taught by someone who is a specialist in that particular science and the whole teaching staff that we have are highly experienced and very very qualified so that's the first reason the second one is our building that we teach the sciences in. So we are incredibly fortunate in that the Centenary Centre, which if we just go to the next slide, we'll be able to see um, some of the features that that centre can offer. Now, it's not just science in the Centenary building. There's also math, psychology, economics. But in terms of the science provisions, there are 13 state of the art labs. And on top of that, we have one dedicated science computer room as well. And this sets us up to be able to run a whole host of practicals that are quite advanced. Um, and we have really good equipment as well, because when we got this new building, we were very fortunate that we were given a grant to buy state of the art equipment to go with these labs. They're really nice light and airy rooms to be working in um, and open learning spaces, which are for the A-level students. Those were based in this building as well. Now, the next reason is the extracurricular and the supercurricular opportunities that are offered within science. And these are key for developing your understanding, your enjoyment of the subject, and also they are really impressive on your UCAS application if you are already thinking ahead to applying for universities. So if we have a look at some of the opportunities that we offer, one thing that we do is lots of opportunities for you to have a chance to experience leadership within the sciences. So there's a lot of student led activities within the sciences and that ranges from writing and editing our STEM magazine, being a tutor or a mentor for the younger students and we have lots of STEM clubs as well so you can get into those practical clubs helping the younger students. We also have a range of visits which are now starting up again post COVID. Um, so we've had visits to local areas like Epping Forest for biology and ecology. For physics, there's this trip to Switzerland where you get to go to CERN, um, which is absolutely an amazing opportunity. We also have more local visits in London, um, which is just on the next slide where we have lots of good links with universities. So we typically have um, visits running every year with Imperial College London. We also have opportunities with um, Brunel University where we get to use their state of the art labs at university standard. Also attending lots of different lecture style days as well. Now, on top of that, one thing which is really important for developing your skills further, but also for university applications, is the range of stretch and challenge competitions that we offer. So you can enter lots of different essay competitions for sciences, but also the challenge competitions like the Olympiad. And we've been able to support multiple students over the recent years in achieving the Arkwright Scholarship, which is the most prestigious scholarship for um, engineering. So we do help students in developing in that way. The final thing that we um, are really proud of that we can offer is the support for the medicine and dentistry applicants as well as the healthcare sciences and that's all led by the second in science Mrs Khan. She's actually set up a video for us to go through everything that she offers so we're going to play that now. Miss Estrick, it's Miss Hasler here. Can I suggest that we pop that video into the Teams area for people yes, to watch in their own time, just because I'm aware we've overrun slightly. So we will yeah. load that up in the Teams area in the general channel for everyone to watch from there. In which case, I will say goodbye for now, but please do have a look. If you are interested in those courses, then you can find out the absolute wealth of support that is offered for you in ensuring you get a successful um, application process for that. You're on mute, Miss Hassler. Thank you very much. I'm just going to hand over very briefly to Mrs Easton just to reintroduce herself with a different hat on um, before we close this evening's introductory talk. Mrs Easton. Hello, me again. Hello there, me again. Um, I won't keep you too long uh, because this has been a little bit of information overload, but 
just once again, I wanted to introduce myself as um, what will be um, your head of year 12. And because we aim for continuity and we think that that will serve you best, um, I will always also be your head of year 13. So I will take you through um, the whole of your sixth form experience. So I just wanted to say briefly or speak about briefly what my role will be um, during your time in the sixth form and when you might expect to come into contact with me. Um, now, obviously, your well-being is of the utmost importance to, to me and to the entire sixth form team. Um, and we want you to get the most out of your sixth form experience. So I will be monitoring along with the rest of the sixth form team, your attendance, your academic progress. And if we do identify any issues, then we will also be be um, getting you a, a sort of a plan of support to get you back on track. Um, Mrs Hass has already spoken briefly to you about the tutorial system, so I won't go over that, but it is by far one of the um, aspects of sixth form life that we receive the most positive feedback on in terms of the support that's available for sixth formers. In addition to that support from your tutor, um, the entire sixth form team, including Mrs Hasler, Ms Myers uh, and Ms Henton, will all be looking out for you. So if needs be, I can recommend you for some wellbeing check weekly uh, with Miss Henton. Where necessary, we also offer on-site counselling. And in addition to that, we also offer workshops with the Redbridge Educational Welfare Team. The bottom line is that there is a wealth of support available to you in the sixth form, and it's our aim to make sure that not only do you enjoy your time, but that you fulfil your potential over the next two years. So I look forward to getting to know each and every one of you in time, and I hope that you enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you very much, Mrs Easton. So without further ado, we better look ahead to um, the rest of this evening and to future dates. Um, Mr Jenkins has gone over all of the dates for the application process, but just to confirm that for prospective students from other schools, we will have open mornings taking place on the 7th to the 9th of November, and you will be emailed more information about those and the opportunity to sign up tomorrow. Um, later on this evening, we now go to all of our live sessions with different subject teachers and an opportunity for you to ask questions. So in all of the Teams channels now, you will see that these have begun. The first section focusing more on arts and humanities, sciences, along with EPQ. And I've just noticed there, noted there in bold, religious studies was originally advertised as being in the 6.30 session. It will actually now be in the 17, 7.15 session. So all of those can be found in the different channels in your Teams area, which um, should look a little like that screenshot at the bottom there. There's also a Q&A starting um, in five minutes time with Mr Jenkins in the A-level options channel to ask questions about that process um, and very shortly the Meet the Students and Head of Sixth Form will be beginning with me and some of our current students in the Meet the Students channel. So thank you very much for your attendance at this introductory talk. We look forward to meeting you in those live sessions. If you do have any technical issues um, during this evening, please do just send a quick email to techsupport at woodford.redbridge.sch.uk. But with any luck, you will find your way into those talks and be able to find out more. And we look forward to hopefully receiving your applications in due course and seeing some of you at our open mornings after half term. Thank you very much for joining us and we hope you enjoy the rest of this evening. Goodbye.